Hey guys, Brendan from TAT here. Um, I want to talk about diesel performance chips today. Um, I'm not a fan of them. I've got another one here that, that's causing an issue, so um, we'll have a quick look at it. Okay, so I'm working on a um, V6 Navara today, so it's been a, a bit of a difficult one as far as, you know, very intermittent. Um, the issues he'll have and he'll drop in every now and then. Oh, can you take a quick look at it? Um, you know, it, every now and then it'll just start to run a bit rough, you know, almost get to the point of having a misfire. And then also sometimes it'll just raise the RPM. You can be sitting there at idle and it starts to get a mind of its own. So, um, like a lot of the, the guys out there, they've got four wheel drives, you know, they go and throw all kinds of stuff on them um, to get that extra power. And nine times out of 10, these weird intermittent issues, it's gonna be the fault. So. Um, luckily enough, in this one, I'm able to get it to, to fault, and I, I know what's causing his RPM issue. It's to do with the, the pedal um, chip, if you like, that he's got down on the accelerator pedal. Um, he's also got a separate um, unit that, that is just modifying rail pressure, and that's likely going to be having a fault too, for all we know. But um, with the pedal one, at least I'm able to tap the unit and get the thing to play up. So, I mean, it's a pretty open and shut case. So, I'll give you a quick look at what I'm talking about. Okay, so it's sitting here idling away nicely, already hot. Um, you can see the taco there we'd be at what call it 850 900 rpm or something of the sort but it's quite steady and, and okay now underneath the dash here um, we can see this pedal torque um, chip and that's just going to the accelerator pedal and it's um taking the signal and modifying it before it goes to the ecu now i'll show you where i'm putting my hand just under here and i'm just going to give that a tap and we'll watch the taco Hopefully you can hear the RPM changing because you probably don't see it too much, but I can definitely hear the note change. I'll keep tapping. So you can you can only just see the needle move, but very noticeable when I'm here. I can hear it going up. I mean, maybe I should have had a scan tool here and you'd be able to see the RPM. and. Um, I imagine rail pressure and all those kind of things changing, so um, I'm not happy with that chip. Now, as part of the diagnostic process, I was, you know, basically what we told him is, look, we need to get rid of these before we're even going to attempt to diagnose this. So I just removed this um, other chip that he had in the, the engine bay. So this one essentially is just um, taking the rail pressure from the rail pressure sensor, uh, modifying it by going through this unit before it then sends it off to the ECU. So yeah, we are getting quite a few problems with them and, and I mean, I'm not here to name and shame brands. Give me a list of them and I've, I've taken them off cars because of intermittent issues that they've been causing. Um, right through from, you know, something like this, a no code setting um, type drivability fault um, through to your, your limp mode, you know, difficult ones, limp when it's only towing at a specific temperature and all this kind of stuff that it's, it's difficult stuff to find, you know, and, and we need to definitely at least be thinking, you know, if you're chasing any of these issues, the first thing to do, as in this case, is to, to get the chips off it. Luckily, in this case, it was that bad. I was able to actually induce it just by touching the chip. Um, and obviously, you know, that's going to be happening every time it goes over a bump or whatnot. But I just don't have the confidence to be recommending these to customers. The, the, the stuff that's out there on the market, you're paying hundreds of dollars for things that are just essentially causing intermittent faults on your vehicle. And, and I, I know that there's going to be ones out there that are working fine for guys and each to their own. But um, from someone that, that does quite a bit of diag diagnostic work, whenever I see these these modifiers, you know, on the MAF, on the rail sensor, on the pedal, um, a lot of the time it's the first place I'm going to go, particularly for these, you know, odd, non-common faults that you just don't see across the, the model generally, something like this where it just randomly wants to raise RPM. So, you know, I'm... I'm I'm not here to tell you what to do, but certainly in, in my workshop, um, yeah, not something that I'd be recommending to customers. We just see too many faults with them. Thanks, guys.